Uh, in the National VIP course, it's separated into three distinct areas, in the ops plan and site plans, in the motorcading, and the third being the bodyguard. Down! I was frustrated today. Yeah, I was definitely frustrated. It's a real steep learning curve for me to process it. You know, when you're tasked with uh, protecting leaders of uh, countries like uh, the United States of America, you have to be capable of, of putting up with that kind of stress. We all are just not security, we're also ambassadors for Canada. Once they finish this course, there's no time to make mistakes after you, you leave this building. In Ottawa, Canada's capital, VIPs are frequent guests. These VIPs are vulnerable to a variety of attacks, threats, and acts of sabotage. An assassination attempt could occur on any street corner, at any time, anywhere. The RCMP provides the team to protect these VIPs. This team, composed of highly trained men and women, are skilled, alert, and prepared for the unexpected. Inside RCMP National Headquarters, Bill Demo, a veteran of protective policing, is preparing the training syllabus for the next National VIP course. The VIP driver training course is a four-day course that candidates must succeed. It's a prerequisite for the national course. It's, uh, it's an intensive course. A lot of work has to go into it. It's advanced techniques, uh, defensive and offensive, uh, because we're not dealing with regular policing. At times, we have to get away from the bad guy because they're trying to attack our motorcades. The training today is about escape and evasion. It's about getting away quickly from an attack or even an ambush. Seconds count. The training is tough. It has to be. I've worked with the uh, National VIP course since 1984 as a, an instructor and became a lead instructor. We've uh, modified the course, improved it to, uh, to understand the capability of the vehicle, what it can do, uh, and also your limitation. But with the training, these people will have the tools to get away from a situation. This morning, uh, in the high-speed reversing, the candidates will be leaving one from the chute that you see right behind me and reversing at a high rate of speed. They have to achieve 80 kilometers an hour and in the controlled fashion, break within a short distance of time, maintaining control of the vehicle at all times. We have to get out of, of the way as fast as possible. Quick movement, tuck your elbow in, Brace yourself, up to 80, and we're stopping. And then in a nice, straight fashion. We have had in the past cars uh, going out of control and hitting bar barricades and going into the ditch. It's uh, part of the, the training and it's a cost of doing business, but it's something that has to be done to show them in real life if a, a situation were to occur. This is the only way of teaching them this is what's going to happen if you lose control. Just hold on tight. Uh, going 80 kilometers backwards in a straight line is uh, not something I've done frequently or often, but uh, obviously this is what we're learning here is it can be done. Come in the back, jump in the back. Going full reverse on a city street, those pylons represent cars or even pedestrians. Mistakes could cost lives. The standards are high, the pressure intense. One wrong move on the course could lead to failure and these candidates know it. That's what happens when the candidates don't hold the steering wheel in the proper position. They lose control, and like I said earlier, the, the, mass of, the mass of the car is in the front where the engine block is. And because of that, once you lose control, the back end is going to always lose to the front end. The other maneuvers uh, that uh, we involve also is the pit maneuver precision immobilization technique. And we have our specialized car we've uh, modified so that the exact dimension of the bumpers close reality. 
And this is a def uh, an offensive movement that we use in case uh, one of our motorcades would be under attack. It's a way of taking another car out of the out of the play. Crank it up a notch. Once you feel that you've got control, then yeah. brush me, and then it's a complete lane change. It's your weapon, you're accountable. <laughs> the stress is consuming. Candidates need to ensure a near perfect performance in order to pass. This perfection is what saves lives. We had a really good day on the track today. Uh, a lot of candidates are putting a lot of effort into it. We've got a couple of people that are sort of on the borderline of, of making it or not. Uh, hopefully, uh, when it comes time to the test runs this afternoon, uh, they're going to bring their A game out and, and make it. Uh, you know, we, we make our courses here. We hope for that everybody passes, but reality does set in and not everybody can, can make the grade. If the candidates can't take the pressure of a stopwatch, they won't be able to take the pressure of an attack. Those who fail go home. In Ottawa, VIP candidates underwent an intense driving course. Each candidate was timed to the second. Everything was graded. Only the most advanced drivers moved on. For Constable Cooper and Corporal Dollywall, it's been a good day. They both passed. It was pretty much uh, catch and go as to whether or not I'd be remaining for the, the whole driving course, but it worked out, and it worked out really well. Driving course, uh, very intense, but when you put the techniques into use, it just comes to you. Now comes the real test. This is where they learn the essentials of protection services, and it won't be easy. The RCMP wants only the best to be in VIP protection. Uh, in the National VIP course, uh, it's, it, it's separated into three distinct areas, uh, the first being the ops plan and site plans, the second being motorcading, and the third being uh, bodyguarding. We start off the course with uh, ops planning and site security, and it's one of the, the lead uh, points for our course, because when dignitaries come to visit Canada, they go to sites, uh, whether it be hotels or convention centers. So when they come to visit, uh, every site that they go to has to be secured. For this training scenario, the instructors have chosen the RCMP stables home of the famous musical ride, often a destination of choice for visiting VIPs, which is why it is a logical training scenario. Filled with corridors, side rooms, and even hiding places, the labyrinth-like layout poses incredible challenges for the candidates. So basically the candidates will be coming here and uh, doing a site plan for an actual visit that's going to be part of our mock visit on Thursday. They'll be coming in and they're going to be looking at the site itself, looking for where there's parking, where they're going to bring their motorcade in, how they're going to set up the motorcade. They're going to look at uh, where the washrooms are and they're going to want to see where all, everything is located, uh, emergency exits and so on and so forth for the uh, dignitaries' uh, security. It is essential that the site is secure. They must assess and reassess the area for potential threat venues. An attack can come from anywhere. Worst case scenarios have to be planned for. Nothing can be missed. Once the site has been approved, the travel routes need to be prepared for the motorcade. The routes chosen must be quick, efficient, but above all, safe. This morning they were given a route plan lecture and they went out and planned routes and now we are practicing with those routes. So everything's got to be smooth, everything's got to be safe. There's always always minor issues here and there, that's why we're here. And then uh, once, we, once we leave the course and hopefully they got the base to keep improving when they go to their units uh, in, in real operations. As soon as it's clear to go and the motorcade commander gives the command to go, what we're going to do is we're gonna come up and we're gonna form almost like a little umbrella. Okay, so both your S1 and your S2 are gonna be on the left-hand side protecting that side of the limo. And we're gonna take them right over to the proper side and we move it over and then we fall back into our normal formation. There's a lot of, of small details that we work with on a daily basis in VIP and, and motorcading is the same. There's certain ways you have to open the doors, uh, certain ways you have to protect your motorcade. Candidates take turns being either motorcade commander or driver. 
Their roots must be flawless and time to the second. Communication is vital. Uh, there's a lot of stress. They know that today is a day that the, the proverbial stopwatch is going and we're, we're sitting in the cars and watching everything that they're doing. So they've got to bring their A-game in and they've got to make it happen. Approaching intersection, the light is red, be prepared to stop. VIP uh, work is, uh, is really important as far as the motorcade is concerned. It's one of the, it's one of the big three. Uh, when uh, VIP does come off the plane uh, from any country, the first exposure he gets to Canada is in the motorcade. So uh, it, it has to be smooth. Uh, we're, we all are, just not security, we're also ambassadors for Canada. Uh, and we act in many roles that way. The RCMP's VIP protection program is considered one of the best in the world. Many countries look to the RCMP for help with their protective service programs. But that prestige has been earned through exceptionally high standards. Those standards come with a cost. Only those who are quick thinking, have an eye for detail, and can hold up under pressure will advance. Well, unfortunately, not everybody made it through the motorcade module, but uh, by and large, uh, once again, it's, it's just the nerves. The final training module, bodyguard protection, lightning fast reactions to deadly serious scenarios. The ultimate physical and mental test for the candidates. Once they finish this course, if they get their certificate, it's game on and it starts now. There's no time to make mistakes after you, you leave this building. The National VIP course is two-thirds complete, with only the bodyguard module remaining. Combatives, the art of self-defense. This training is critical for candidates. Having the ability to deter or defeat an attacker with your hands, it can mean the difference between life and death. It's the most physically challenging part of the course. Right now, the candidates are learning self-defense techniques uh, in order to be able to protect their VIP. If uh, there's attacks that come towards them with either knives or guns or any other type of weapon, they have to be able to get that weapon away from the person and get the VIP out of the, out of the way. So you over here, gun! You over here, bang! All the way. Gun! Yeah. Down, elbows down. I was frustrated today. Yeah, I was definitely frustrated because I want to do things well and I want to be able to do them effectively too. So um, it was it was a challenge. It was a lot. I, I don't know what I was expecting for this afternoon. We can look at it on the syllabus and then once you're actually here, of course, it's, it's not what maybe you think. It's now time for the candidates to use their hand-to-hand -hand skills in real-world scenarios. Now we have what we call scenario-based training. It's all scenarios we've prepared. Uh, things that make sense, nothing over the top, but they got to come in and, and do their thing. You know, we have different uh, bodyguard formation. They're going to start with a four members bodyguard, and uh, we'll drop it down to two, and then the one on one. Okay, and what happened? I looked to the left and I saw a man with a knife. Okay. And good reaction. I'm trying to remember what I did now. Jamming your VIP, he's out of harm's way, and then you deal with the threat. That was well done. It's going well. It's uh, going better than I thought it would. I was really anxious about it. Baby steps, baby steps. You know, adrenaline's going, and you're stressed out to the max because of the scenario-based training as well. But you just got to bring it down a notch and go in with common sense. And of course, uh, simunition, we use this, uh, this weaponry that's all it used to be called paintball, similar to that. It's a soap base uh, type uh, uh, colorant that's in the, it's in the uh, rounds. And we use a nine millimeter, similar, very similar to our service pistol. And so, uh, you know, when, when they get through this scenario-based training using, using simunition, they get a little apprehensive about uh, the idea of getting shot and getting shot at. You know, of course, there's no uh, danger, we take all the safety precautions, but there's something about, you know, getting stung by uh, some kind of a bullet that, that makes it very real, actually. And that's the idea behind it. Scenario-based training helps the bodyguards to be alert, ready for the unexpected. March 1981, the unexpected happened. 
a deranged attacker comes after President Ronald Reagan. In the span of three seconds, six bullets were fired. Of those six bullets, four found targets, leaving several people critically injured, including the U.S. President. This is an example of why extreme emphasis is applied to the bodyguard module. These candidates need to be 100% aware of their surroundings, because a lot can happen in three seconds. The candidates have successfully completed the bodyguard training, but there is one more thing to do. Every year we come down here and we pay respect to our fallen uh, comrades. So you can see all the names that died on, uh, on duty. The memorial is uh, overwhelming. Um, there's a few uh, names that I recognize. Uh, I knew uh, James Galloway. He was uh, in K Division and uh, he was shot at a uh, Ert call. So it's a little overwhelming because you recognize the names on there and you have a bit of a connection, but it's nice to see that those people are being recognized uh, for, you know, putting the public and, and the safety before their own selves. This is a grim reminder of how dangerous police work is, including VIP protection. It seems that every year, more names are added to the list of those who have made the ultimate sacrifice. Today is the final test, the last challenge for the candidates on the National VIP course. Here, they bring all their skills and training into sharp focus. They must escort a fictitious president through the busy streets of Ottawa. They don't know what to expect or what the threats could be, just like in the real world. This is the candidate's opportunity to show us that they've grasped all of the uh, the techniques and the, the, the intricacies of, of VIP work and, and show us that they know what they're doing. It's, the mock visit is, is played throughout the city through real contacts, real sites. Uh, Ottawa City Police, who are second to none in the country, are amazing. We couldn't do it without them. Uh, they actually get to drive the real stretch limo for the first time. It's the real deal. And, and uh, it, they see their work come live. Good luck. Let's go. Every turn of the motorcade could present a potential threat. The VIP protection candidates take turns in different roles, constantly being assessed and graded by instructors. They have been taught the techniques to deal with every situation. It's now up to them. The president is now under VIP protection, hour after hour, location after location. The candidates escort the mock president. The VIP team must ensure his safety at all times. While the motorcade is en route, Constable Monique Cooper is finalizing the security at the next site. A problem arises, and she deals with it. Member Site Commander, just to advise uh, Lady 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 here, she's got herself handcuffed to the bench. I'm just running a 29 on her. The mock visit is as real as it can get. Site after site, real potential problems are encountered. Every scenario must be dealt with quickly and efficiently. At the end of every scenario, the team is debriefed on what they did right and what they did wrong. We put a lot of uh, put a lot of pressure on them. Obviously, it's uh, and that's what it's all about. You know, when you're tasked with uh, protecting the leader of your country or leaders of uh, countries like uh, the United States of America. You have to have uh, your A-game on. You have to be capable of, of putting up with that kind of stress and that kind of uh, hours. And, and it's very demanding, but also very rewarding at the end of the day. At the end of the day, the VIP was kept safe from all threats. The National VIP training course is now officially finished. 
Some passed, some didn't. For Constable Monique Cooper and Corporal Harpreet Dhaliwal, their hard work and dedication have paid off. They successfully finished the course. The whole experience was really, really incredible. It was like being on a roller coaster that had lots of twists and turns and even a couple of loops. Uh, sometimes I didn't know if I was going backwards or forwards. But being at this end of it, at this perspective, I can honestly say it was fantastic. <sighs> Let me tell you, you know, it's a big load off your shoulders and stuff like that. Um, it's one of the best courses that I've been on. Uh, it was very realistic. Uh, now it's up to the individual members to just keep going and keep at it. It's, it's nice to see uh, the candidates bring it all together and actually go out and do the job at the end of the, uh, of the course because we do everything compartmentalized and then at the end on the mock visit we throw everything together and it's a culmination of everything from off-site planning, the, the ops plan itself, the motorcade, the bodyguarding, it all comes together and it's, it's fun to see the candidates succeed.